Hello there and welcome to the March update from Dean Park Station. Um, quite a few bits and pieces I've been working on in the last month, um, so I'll take you through that and uh, a wee running session at the end as well. Okay, one of the major things I've been working on this uh, month is the cable trunking on the lower section. Um, as you can see here, I've extended it all the way along and round the corner so that the cable trunking is now pretty much complete on the lower level. Um, the cable trunking I use is from Ten Commandments and I picked up a, a few mega packs at Model Rail Scotland back in February and um, I just prime it with a grey primer and then I use um, Precision New Concrete Paint which is enamel and I put a couple of coats of that on. Um, it's Because I was doing such a large amount I put it through the airbrush and did a big um, a big load of it at once which allowed me to complete all the, the lower section and I just attach it to the uh, the baseboard with some rocket um, super glue and it comes with uh, the corner pieces, the T pieces and a mixture of long straight sections um, like this one and then shorter shorter sections it also comes with sections where there is the, the lid or the cover missing from part of it which I've just picked out in black it's, it gives the wiring and the cabling inside which I, I've just used um, matte black humbrel um, and there's some loose um, lids you can actually fit onto them I've done that with quite a few before I painted them that was filled in and so was this one um, because I, I feel there's too many of these uh, but I'll be fitting lids at a kind of you know, jaunty angle on, on some of the ones that are, that are painted in black um, to look like the lid's not been put back on correctly. Another thing I've done before a ballast is I put the orange um, tubing uh, through the tracks there, um, obviously where the, the cable would go and, the, and in real life the orange um, piping would uh, protect the, the cabling um, a bit from the, the, tra the train traffic above, so I've put that there and the good thing about the Ten Commandments stuff is the longer sections flex quite nicely so you can get a kind of curve and you just have to work it out. And you go all the way around and follow the 47 and it crosses the track here and then it continues along in front of the, uh, the masts around the corner to there and it will go under the bridge and up the incline. So that's the, the cable trunk and complete for the, the lower section. It might not look like it's a big job but it's time consuming getting it all painted and, and primed and uh, then you know uh, laid on the, on the baseboard. So I'm quite glad that's done now and that allows me now to go ahead and ballast the, the rest of the lower section which will be um, done in the next month or so. And that'll complete ballasting, track laying on the lower level. Something else I've been working on this month is positioning the signals on the upper section. Um, these are four aspect signals and in this particular case with a left hand feather. Uh, as you can see it's uh, not wired up yet. That allows the, the train to turn left at the, the turn out there and go down to the, the lower section. I swing the camera around. I've done the same on the other line and this is a right hand feather which allows the train to cross the tracks and go down to the incline at the uh, top of the screen there and the rest on the upper section are just standard four aspect signals all my signalling is from CR signals and all the uh, programmable boards are from Heathcote Electronics um, I've had a couple of requests on, on and um, the boards that I've used, so I'll, I'll show you that and how easy they are to wire up. Right, here I've got a Heathcote um, signal uh, decoder board along with a four aspect signal. Now, the CR ones are really easy to install. Um, this, in this case, is, the, is, a, is a, a feathered one, and that's picked out by the white cable. You've got the green, the red, the uh, you've got the yellow, and the double yellow there. So. And obviously you've got the common negative um, there as well. And these all go into 
these um, terminals here. And on the underside of the Heathcote boards, it actually tells you what they are. Um, red, yellow, green, etc. So you can't um, you know, wire them the wrong way around. These terminals here are for the positive and negative um, 12 volt DC feed. Um, I think these boards are also uh, you can also get them compatible for DCC, but I don't, I don't uh, go down that route. So you've got your, uh, your zero and your positive volts, and you've also got here a send and receive. Um, so it allows you to link them to other signals on the line. So as a train passes um, this, it triggers the, the two sensors which are placed through the sleepers. It then sends a signal to red. After a period of time or when it's past the next signal, if it's linked through the send and receive wires, it will change to the yellow, etc, etc, and then back to green through its sequence. So, um, these sensors here, I always get the extended wire ones now, especially for the upper level where I've got the distance between the, this baseboard and the, you know, the raised baseboard. I don't want any units attached directly to the bottom of this because access for changing them or maintenance or repairs is impossible once I've got all the scenic material in place. So this cable here will feed through the bottom of the baseboard and all the boards will be mounted underneath. Easy access for wiring up etc. So I'd go for the extended wire uh, versions. I didn't when I first started on the lower section. Um, there wasn't a need to do it because I could attach the the circuit board straight under this baseboard and it came through the, between the sleepers so there wasn't a problem but I just find these a lot easier to install um, than the, the non extended wire versions which you do obviously get so that's just a Airdask 4 um, extended wire um, if you wanted it to have on a timer so that the signal automatically changed regardless if a train passed it or not you'd get a mass sequencer board um, and after a period of time you can adjust the adjustable resistor the the lights would change from red, yellow to green um, you know if you had a single signal on a line for example and you didn't have it in a loop um, for an end to end layout for example so in my loop of four signals in the upper I've got three ERDAS 4s and one mass sequencer which allows when the last train passes it allows the sequence to kind of reset itself and start again I'll show you one of these boards attached directly to the baseboard. Um, there we have one there. Now, you've had to, I've had to put a bit of ply just to um, lower it a bit because the sensors coming from the board were a bit long and they were poking through the top of the sleepers. So I've just put a bit of ply, drilled a hole in it, and the sensors are, you know, go through the board, go through the baseboard. Um, and there is how easy it is to connect. You've got your, you know, um, yellow and um, red and Green. As you can see, the red LED was flashing there. That was the, that was the sensor being triggered. Um, and now, oh, this is this is actually a, a mass sequencer one. This is the last one in the in the line of three signals in the lower section. Because remember, these are the three aspect ones that I've got in the lower. So it'll go through its its um, you know series of of um, time loops, and it'll change the signal automatically. There is the plus and minus and there is your um, send and receive which goes to the previous signal in the system. Now watch when the train goes past this one, the sensor just before the turnout, flicks it to red and because this is a mass sequencer if the train stopped now and didn't pass the next signal it would still go through goes to yellow and then green and I've set it to be timed. Okay. And the train at this point isn't even past the next signal yet, but as you can see it's starting to go back the sequence and it'll go to green. There we go. So it's it um it works alongside the other two signals on the system, but because it's a mass sequencer, it has a you know a programmable kind of sequence it goes through. And there's the red the red light flashing as the, the coaches go over the the sensor. If you have any questions on that, I know two or three people ask me about my signalling. Any questions on this, um, you know, do, do get in touch. It is very simple. Um, you know, these can be standalone units, and it's this green cable here that goes to the the um, send and re send or receive um, terminal 
on the previous signal and then that signal in turn sends another cable, a green cable, to the other signal. So all three signals on the lower loop are connected. And obviously if you've got four signals on the upper section, I'll have four signals connected. It really is, it is really quite simple. It must be for uh, me to understand it. I took a wee break from actually wiring the, the TMD and the, um, the signalling and, and I put together this little kit. It's a Nightwing kit and uh, it's a, a small fueling point and it's got uh, the right hand side there's kind of a little uh, telephone um, box. You've got at the far left you've got the hose plus the, the pipe coming up from the, the ground. You've got the red oxide fuel line and then obviously you've got the green kind of control a body panel, just like a, a forecourt in a car a petrol station. And I've just put that there as a kind of supplementary fueling point for any locals that have just nipped into the, the two line service and depot um, and they've maybe not got the opportunity to go to the proper fueling, fueling point. And uh, you know, I'll maybe have put that there, a wee pump house, pump room there, just to pump the fuel underground to the the, um, the unit. Another thing I've been buying when I was at Motherwell Scotland I bought some uh, Ten Commandments steel coils um, and I've painted them in aluminium a mixture of aluminium and silver and then I've weathered them with some uh, weathering weathering powders um, and, wet, and, and a humble wash to give it a kind of rusty look They've been sitting outside, and there's ones of varying levels of rust, um, depending on where they've been stored. Also painted up my um, oil drums. Uh, at the right hand side, there I've got some orange, and I wear them very lightly. And I've kind of been giving them a faded orange look, like they've been sitting outside. Um, then I've got my kind of shell. I picked these pictures from the internet and copied them. A shell uh, oil barrel, and then I've got the BP ones, um, and that was just emerald green and. Uh, real yellow and I've just matted them, spray matted them. Very light weathering on some of them, some look like they're newer. Um, some of them have kept very clean, some were left outside for, for a long time, so they got pretty weathered. Something else I did is I bought a couple more wagon loads, again from Ten Commandments. Um, I bought that one previously and I just bought another one the same. Again painted a mixture of aluminium and silver and wa um, weathered with a, a brown wash from Humbro. Um, and this one here is steel coils, just like the ones that are lying on the ground. And I've given them a lighter weathering, um, like they're newer, against a light wash. So there's wee bits and pieces that add to the, the detail. And uh, I'll be continuing to do that for the TMD in the next two or three months, just to build up the detail. So when I do get the hard standing and the, and the, the ballast down, I can put things together quite quickly, because I've got all the wee details sitting.
that's really all the updates for this month. I um, hope you enjoyed watching the video and the small running session. And uh, my next video will be a, a layout tour. I've had a few requests regarding uh, doing that for my new subscribers. Um, so I'll be doing a, a quick layout tour on what I've done and where I think I'm, I'm going to go next with regard to the ideas and, and building up the layout scenery. So look out for that video and uh, more in the future. Cheers just now.